let's pick up where we left off, talking about LTI systems, and try to introduce this notion of discrete time convolution. So the goal are now to understand how and why the output of a discrete time LTI system is called the convolution of the input with the impulse response and understand what convolution means and understand what impulse response means. Okay, so let's define the impulse response of a system. And this works for both DT and CT. We can define the notion of an impulse response. And it's just the output of the system when you apply a unit impulse. So you stick delta of n in, out in and you get out something, and that something we'll call h of n. Or in continuous time, we stick in delta of t, and the output will just get something. With whatever the output is, we're going to call that h of t. So you can think of this as a kind of the system as being sort of like a bell, and the delta of n comes in, and you, you're hitting the bell, and you're saying, what does it sound like? What does the ring of the bell sound like? And that's your h of n. Similarly, in continuous time, you can think of it in it that way as well. So what we're going to show is that y of n, uh, y of n is actually the out, which is the output, right? The output is equal to this strange looking sum. It's the sum of x of k, h of n minus k, from k equals minus infinity to infinity. So this formally as a mathematical object might be confusing at first and it and often is a little confusing, and we're going to try to deconfuse you uh, as we go along, right? But what this is called is called the discrete time convolution of x and h. So let's go back to our picture. Remember last time we had our delta and there are deltas over here. Uh, these were just delayed copies of the same delta n over here. And then we pass them through the gains x, x1, x2, all the way up to xk, continuing downward. And then over here, here's what, here over here at the output, we got x of n. And then we said, OK, what if we apply h to x of n to get y of n? So let's now use our LTI system properties to try and simplify this block diagram and see maybe the impulse response, this delta of n over here, will somehow end up being an input to this h. And then we'll see where the impulse response comes from. OK, so first step, you can use linearity. You can take the h, and you can push it back through the, through the gains and the summation. So we took h, and we pushed it from here to here. And then, uh, so, so that's the first operation of linearity. And now what do we have? We have delays and h. And we know that we can switch delays and h by time invariance. So here we use linearity. And over here, we're going to use time invariance. So let's see what that looks like. Voila. We have taken the h and swapped it with the delays using time invariance to swap h and delay. And now you can see each of these delta of n's, these copies of delta of n, are going into to h. So we can see that the output of h with, we know that the output of h with delta of n is just going to be h of n. And we're going to get the same h of n at all of these, at all of these locations. So we can kind of even simplify this one step. And we can say we take delta of n, we apply h to get h of n, so this is the impulse response. Right? And then we take the impulse response, we delay it by different amounts, 1, 2, 3, up to k, et cetera. And so we get h of n minus 1, h of n minus 2, h of n minus k. And then we're going to apply these gains, x1, x2, xk, and we're going to get yn. So what is this term over here? It's x1, h of n minus 1. This term over here is x2, x2, h of n minus 2. And all the way down here, this term here is going to be xk h of n minus k. And so we can see that this output y is going to be the summation k equals minus infinity to infinity, because we have these, we have potentially an infinite number of these things, x of k, h of n minus k. Right, and so this is the convolution. This thing is the convolution. So we can do this uh, in equations instead of in pictures, and, and 
it's always useful, I think, uh, to have a picture in your mind uh, when you're looking at an equation, because uh, at least for me, it helps to think visually about these things, and maybe it works for you too, but maybe for some people, some of you, it might be that uh, the algebraic manipulations are a little more instructive, so let's, let's just do it algebraically. All right, so we want to apply h to x. We want to put x through the system h. So we just plug in, uh, plug in for x, we plug in this representation here of x in terms of, um, in terms of shifted delta functions, right? So this was this way of writing a discrete time signal as a, as a sum. Now, we can take this, uh, this linear combination here and we can use the linearity property, so this is linearity property of, of, of h to kind of pull the h all the way in to say now we're just going to say looking at h of delta n minus k, x of k is a, this thing is a constant, right, that I'm summing over, so it's the syst system uh, h is actually being applied to this is these signals because we're saying x of n is a linear combination of these delta signals, so we are instead applying h to the delta, to the delta, delayed delta functions. Okay, then stepping one step forward, we can write this del delta of n minus k as a delay of k applied to delta of n, and then what we know now is that the h and the delay can be switched with each other. So we can sw switch the delay with the h, and then we use the fact that h of, of, with input delta of n is just h of n, and then we have this delay of k times h of n, so this is going to be h of n minus k over here. All right, and we get our final result. We get our result that y is equal to x of k times h of n minus k, and there, those are happening right here. So I hope that was uh, relatively clear. It might be worth going back over it and writing it out for yourself, uh, just step by step, so that you understand each of the steps and that you can see why this sort of, this convolution sum kind of just falls out of the, the algebra and the properties. So we can write this as a theorem. This is like the first major important fact that we're learning in the class. And so we can say, let H be a discrete time, a discrete time linear time invariant system or an LTI system with impulse response H of n. Then the output y of n to an input signal x of n is the discrete convolution of xn and hn, this, this formula that we saw here. So this is the convolution. And really what you should try to remember is the, the meaning in, in sort of plain English, which is that the everything you need to know about the system and how it works and what it's doing to input signals, everything you need to know is in the is contained in the impulse response of the system. So this, if I want to know if the system is stable, if I want to know if the system is causal, if I want to know uh, all sorts of things about the system, any of those system properties we mentioned, I actually just have to study the impulse response of the system. And that's really powerful because it kind of means that we don't have to pay attention to so many things. We just have to look and understand the impulse response and how the structure of the impulse response implies different properties. So as I said uh, before, we're going to call LTI systems filters, and we'll talk about the filter h of n, which means actually the filter with impulse response h of n. But if I kept saying that over and over again, I would just trip over my own mouth. So we're going to talk about the filter h of n instead. Okay, so let's go back to this ringing the bell metaphor that I used earlier. So if we look at this formula, y of n is equal to h x of k times h of n minus k. This is the, so if this is the bell rung at, uh, this is kind of the bell rung at time k, or rather delayed by k. So we shouldn't say at time k, we should say delayed by k. Right, this is h of n minus k, that's what it is. So we can interpret this whole thing as, as the following. Um, at time k, x of k times delta of n minus k, that delta function scaled by the value of the signal x of k enters the system and that rings the bell at time k. And the system responds by copying h of n out. So it basically says, you know, if I had an input that looked like this and this, 
then I would get an output and, and my h of n looks like, you know, I don't know, like something like this. Then you know, what I would say is that the output here, I would get maybe one copy of this, and then I would have to add to that another copy of this thing delayed by this amount here. So I would get these this combination of the two. So I get two belts, so this is two ringing, two times, uh, two times ringing the bell. And if you think about ringing a bell, if you hit it twice, you know, the first, uh, the re reverberations from the first time you hit it haven't necessarily died out by the second time you hit it. So you're going to get the superposition, the superposition of all of these uh, bell ringings, and the superposition of all of these copies. Right? So this is kind of one way to think about it. Uh, and, you know, there are other ways of thinking about it, and we'll see uh, other ways of interpreting um, how to compute the impulse response. and. So that's what we're going to kind of dig into in the next uh, in the next few presentations.